So it's one thing to retcon a character like Batman. It's a whole nother thing to retcon U.S. history. I'm a huge Batman fan. They just dropped Batman Cape Crusader on Prime Video. We all know the trouble history of this show. It was supposed to come out with WB. WB canceled it. Amazon picked it up. And now we finally get this 1940s inspired Batman Cape Crusader noir Batman year one, taking him back to his roots, taking him back to the first appearance of the character. When I heard about this show, I was very excited because everyone said it's going to take place in 1940. Bruce Tim said, we're really leaning into 1940. The only problem is, besides the aesthetics and the lack of technology, this is very much a modern world. Some people, they're gonna write this thing off. They're gonna be like, it's just modern. It's very diverse. So if that's what they were going for, they nailed that. It's extremely diverse. To a fault, I would say, especially considering the time period. I think there was a really interesting story to tell and you get that in spurts. Batman works the best in the late 30s, early 40s. It's post Great Depression. It's right before World War II. The country is in a dark place, but emerging into the light of the industrial space age, right? But here it's kind of locked into the old ways. Crime runs rampant. The police forces, the fire departments, everyone is corrupt. Everyone's like looking out for themselves. There are large immigrant populations, Italian Americans, Jewish Americans, Asian Americans, and they're all trying to find their place in this country. African Americans who are still relegated to second class citizenship. There's a lot to explore here just in the realistic 1940s. But unfortunately, the showrunners didn't want to tackle it or they felt it was too difficult or they wanted to be able to tell a story unimpeded by some of the tougher social issues to tackle of that time period. They took 2024 America and transplanted it to 1940. Of course, and as an Italian American, you could tell the people that are the dumb lug gangsters because they haven't changed their speech patterns. They haven't changed their look. But some of the other characters are speaking in a very 21st century speech pattern. Something that a lot of people are gonna notice, Batman isn't the focus of the show. As crazy as it sounds. So I watched the first three episodes. Episode one focuses very heavily on Barbara Gordon, who is a public defender going up against Harvey Dent and also the female Penguin, who is a mob boss at the time. You get some Batman, you get some Bruce Wayne, but this is probably the most one dimensional version of the character we've ever gotten. If you thought Matt Reeves, the Batman was one dimensional, this takes it to another level. Batman is strictly there to beat bad guys up, and Bruce Wayne is as cold and shallow as he's ever been. Hamish Linkletter's version of The Dark Knight, the voice he's doing, sounds great. It's very Conroy-esque. It takes you back to that Batman the Animated Series. The art and animation really shines in some points. Lazy in others. Too much CGI with the Batmobile. The physics on the Batmobile don't work at all. It doesn't look like it's actually turning corners or whatever it's supposed to be doing. It's also sort of out of time. There's two gadgets that are out of time that I've seen so far. His rappel gun, which is definitely functions like a modern device, and his Batmobile. I know it's a play on a slick roadster, but it it definitely feels like a 2024 device. Other elements are, are really good, like the Gotham Police Precinct, how the cops look, how the cops interact with each other. Foss and Bullock are great as these two corrupt cops. I think they play really well. They're in kind of like zoot suits almost. So they they work really well in, in the time frame. Episode two, which is the Clayface episode. I won't, again, this is going to be spoiler free, but you see Montoya really taking the lead. Very culturally retconned, socially retconned, historically retconned to fit the narrative. It's much more of a Montoya story than it is a Batman story or a Bruce Wayne story. I would say the A story is Montoya investigating Clayface. Batman Bruce Wayne is also doing that investigation, but he's definitely three steps behind her. The action is great. The set pieces and the set decoration design, that's all great. In episode two, it takes place in, in Hollywood. Gotham, of course, has like its own production. So like Gotham is like New York, LA, Chicago, Philadelphia, all roll in the one. They have their, their, their version of the studio and the very Hollywood sense that comes with that, that time period. They're very like, hey, it's showbiz, kid type of vibe and that's awesome. And then episode three focuses on Catwoman. And again, Catwoman, and then you get introduced to the new retconned Harleen Quinzel. The idea that Bruce Wayne has to go to a therapist and, and you'll see why he has to if you watch the episode. The fact that he has to go to a therapist and a therapist is a woman and a 
a minority woman is just maybe it happened in the 1940s but that that's highly unlikely the catwoman arc is really good i think it makes total sense you get a lot of the selena kyle catwoman score elements that you would hear or it's reminiscent of batman returns christina ricci does a great job as catwoman all the voice acting is really good again certain speech patterns certain performers in particular barbara gordon and harleen quinzel both speak in a 21st century cadence. They do not speak in a 40s or even a 40s inspired cadence, while other characters are extremely rooted in that 40s style. This is a tough one for me because I, I recommend the show. I love Batman. I love Elseworlds. This is an Elseworld. I do think it's dangerous to change US history so much. You know, the old adage, you either learn from history or you're doomed to repeat it, is going to start to apply to a lot of the content that's being created and how things are being changed and manipulated. I think there's so much rich history of the country, especially in the 40s. And again, I'm speaking from an Italian American who has an immigrant family. We were not treated well in the 1940s. I think audiences are mature enough to understand that it's a bygone era and that we've grown from that. And there's still a richness and there's still a diversity to explore without completely modernizing it so it doesn't alienate certain aspects of a social ideology. 40s America, it's a messy place. There's so much that can be explored and I think the only thing that they embrace is the art for decoration, art deco look of the 40s, which the original Batman, the animated series, did so well, except it sort of modernized it and took it out of time, where this is trying to be an actual period piece. As a period piece, it's a failure. As a Batman story, it's it's half decent. As a full piece, I think it is good. It's well done. It's, it's well presented. You're not going to get a cartoon, especially an American animation, looking this good and playing this good, feeling this good, having the, the score and the texture. A lot is done really well, and there's a lot to enjoy with this series. So ultimately, I do recommend it, but I can do without the revisionist history that seemed to have infected all of modern pop culture.